Hello YouTube, in this video here we're going to be solving a couple of 3x3 three three linear systems but uh, that produce uh, two very special cases and so that would be the inconsistent system that would be where three planes uh, never intersect say at a common point or at common points and then uh, a consistent dependent system in which all three of our planes say maybe intersect along a particular line or maybe just all lie flat on top of each other. It's you know it's all, all order triples you could ever think of satisfy each one. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the the inconsistent system. So first things first, when we say inconsistent, we want to use this word here, inconsistent. Okay, this is a fancy way of saying like no solution. There would be no ordered triple x y z uh, that would satisfy all three of these equations at the same time. So we say it does not exist. It does not exist in x y z. It is a solution to all three of these. Um, but how to recognize it? So let's go ahead and take a look at this system here. Uh, starting with this, we're going to use, of course, our elementary row operations to put this in what we refer to as row echelon form. That is that, that stair step pattern in which the leading coefficient of each row, so we'd say is like 1, so 1x, one we want a 1y and a 1z. Uh, and so let's start with this. Uh, I kind of like to switch my row 1 and my row 2 around because, because this already has a leading coefficient of 1. So um, we're going to go ahead and rewrite the system into a new row equivalent system in which that second row is now our first row because of the leading coefficient of 1. And let's say we switch it with our, I don't know, our first row. So we say row 1 and row 2. If I'm going to show my work here, row 1, row 2, uh, we're switching them around. So there's my work off to the right side. So we say row 1, row 2. We say 3x minus 2y plus 4z was, was our first row, now our second row. And then 2x minus 3y plus 6z is equal to 8. So now this being said, we need to eliminate anything that is underneath this leading one up here on the top left. So showing our work, we'd say, well, since it's a one, you know, we could just uh, scale it up to be a three and a two respectively, and we want it to be negative in each case to cancel out with our positive three and our positive two respectively. So here's how we'll show our work. Uh, we'll say negative three times row one dumped onto row two, and uh, negative two times that first row dumped onto row three. So what this will do is it'll produce, uh, produce excuse me, our new row equivalent system that has the same exact solutions as the original system. Uh, but now it looks like this. Our x's would be gone in these second equations here. But let's talk about our second equation. If we were to negative triple our first equation and add it to row 2, so then we'd have this. We'd have negative 3 times y is negative 3y. Negative 3y plus a negative 2y is negative 5y. So negative 5y now in our second row. Negative 3 times negative 2z is positive 6z, and 6z plus 4z is 10z, so plus 10z. And now our constants, we say negative 3 times uh, positive 3 here is negative 9, negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. So there's our new second equation. Now our third equation, in which we doubled and negated the first row and added it on the third equation, our x is now gone. We say uh, negative 2 times y is negative 2y. Negative 2y plus a negative 3y is negative 5y. So negative 5y. Uh, let's talk about our z's now. We say negative 2 times negative 2z is positive 4z. Positive 4z plus a 6z is 10z. And then last but not least, we have uh, uh, negative 2 times 3 here is negative 6. And negative 6 plus our original 8 uh, gives us 2. So now, uh, at this point, I would say, well, let's get, let's get this to be a 1 here. You know, we could take the second row times, you know, negative one-fifth of the reciprocal of this leading coefficient. But what I want us to recognize at this point is this. We have two, you know, we got a, it's almost like a mini system down here, a 2 by 2 system. But you'll notice that they're nearly identical. And in this instance, I could say, well, what if we were to just go ahead and make things simple on ourselves? What if we were to just, like, take negative row 2, plus row 3. Just go ahead and dump it onto row 3. What we get is this new system. It would look like this. We'd say x plus y minus 2z is equal to 3. Our second equation would still be negative 5y plus 10z, and it would be equal to negative 8. But since we negated and added it, we'd say, well, then it'd be a positive 5y plus a negative 5y, which would cancel out our y's here. We'd no longer have any y's here. But since we negated our 10z in our second row as well and added it to our positive 10z down here, it also cancels out our z's. So we say like so, 0y's plus 0z's. And this is equal to now, 
negative negative 8 in our second row added on to our 2 would be 8 plus 2, we get 10. In other words, we get a third equation that makes this bold statement right here, but it says 0 equals 10, which of course we know is not valid. This is not a valid statement. When is it valid? Never. So we, we'd say whenever you end up with an invalid statement where all your variables are gone, but you're left with an untrue statement, okay, always false, we say we have an inconsistent system. And so, you know, again, things to look for are these. We say, well, if you had two equations that were nearly identical, like, like all the variables were pretty much the same thing, but the constants are not, are not, then we say, okay, well, then you're going to have an inconsistent system. So let's talk about a, a consistent dependent system, a little bit different uh, animal. So we have our uh, system here, three by three, three equations, three variables. You'll notice that our top left x here is already a one. That is lovely. We're going to try to get everything underneath it to be nothing. We want to get rid of those to put it in our stair step fashion. So showing our work, we have this. We have negative 2 times row 1. We're going to add that to row 2. That will get rid of our 2x there. And we say negative 3 times that first x there in row 1, uh, added on to row 3. That's going to eliminate the 3x in the, sec or in the third row. So we have x plus 2y minus 7z is equal to negative 4. Uh, second equation now, our 2x is gone. We say, okay, so negative 3 times the original 2y in the original equation, we say it's negative 6y, negative 6y plus positive 3y is negative 3y. Uh, we say, okay, so negative, uh, oh, whoa, 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 one moment. We were taking negative 2 times row 1. I gotta be careful here. So negative 2 times our 2y here is negative 4y, and negative 4y plus a positive 3y is negative y. So we say negative 2 times this negative 7z, uh, would be positive 14z, and positive 14z plus our original z gives us 15z's. And we say negative 2 times our original negative 4 here is 8, and 8 plus 5 is 13. Okay, so now our third equation here, we'd say we're tripling negative our first row, adding it to our third. Our x's would be gone. Triple this negative 2 would be negative 6. Negative 6y plus a positive y there would be just y. Uh, or positive 7y would be just a y. Uh, if we say negative 3 times negative 7z is 21z, and 21z positive added to negative 36z would be, I believe, negative 15z. And you can see this pattern popping up again here. And we say, okay, so negative 3 now times this original negative 4 would be 12, and 12 plus negative uh, uh, 25 gives us negative 13. So again, we're seeing this situation here in which, you know, I, I should continue. I mean, I should keep going. Actually, I will. I want to. I want to switch row two and row three. And everybody watching this video, you can roll your eyes. I just want this positive coefficient of y to be here. It's like, uh, it's weird, man. When I go places and I get like a beverage and those little tabs you push down, <laughs> you gotta push them down. I have to push them down. It like drives me nuts. So y minus 15z uh, equals negative 13 is now our second row. And we say negative y plus 15z equals positive 13. If, if now, we were to add row 2 on to row 3, it would cancel out your y's. Okay, so you say you get this new system over here, x plus 2y minus 7z minus 7z equals negative 4. Uh, we'd say y minus 15z equals negative 13 is still our second row, but if we dumped our second row onto our third row, what we end up with is this. We get 0 is zero. And this is something that is totally consistent. What does this mean? It means it's true, so it gives us at least one solution, but it's consistent dependent. Why? Because we say we have a situation in which there are several points that satisfy this. Not just one, but several. Consistent dependent. So here's the deal. We actually, a lot of times in math, when you have three by three systems or higher, we want to develop what we call a parameter. And, and, you know, later in the year, I know we typically use the parameter as time, okay? But in this case, we're going to say a parameter is just a certain value that we're going to allow, and allow what? Typically z to be equal to. So just follow my lead here, but basically what we're going to do is this. We're going to pick a variable. We typically go with z. I typically go with z, but we say, let's allow z to equal a. I'm going to use the word let here. Let z equal a. What this means is, as far as our solution goes, this ordered triple, we're saying that the last part's this parameter a that's allowed to wander. They say, well, okay, so what about y, and what about x? Well, this is where that back solve thing comes in. If z were equal to a, we could back solve by substituting that in for z in the second equation. 
And so if we do this, we get now this new equation, y minus 15 times blank equals negative 13, where we're plugging in a or z. So now we have this, y minus 15a equals negative 13. So y actually equals um, 15a, if we add that 15a to the right side, minus 13. And so now this is what y equals. We say 15 a's minus 13. So you might be saying to yourself, self, now that I know z and I know y, how can I find x? We're going to take these now both. We'll switch our color here. So we say this z equal to a, we're going to put it into our first equation. We're going to take this y value now that we just found. We're going to stick it into our second, or second y there, but in our first equation. We end up with this. We say x plus 2 times, I'll leave a big blank here, y minus 7 z equals negative 4, in which z, we said it was a, and we say this is our y value here, so we're going to plug this in right here. We get 15 a's minus 13 constants. So we got a little cleaning to do, but we get this. We get x plus 30a minus 26 minus 7a is negative 4, and now we're going to isolate our x. So we'd say, okay, well, these 30a's here and these negative 7a's, first of all, those produce 23a's minus 26 constants, it's negative 4. And if we were to now add 26 to both sides and subtract 23a's, you know, over to the other side, we get this. We get that x equals negative 23a, and then uh, 26 constants plus negative 4 constants would give us 22. So now we have x in terms of a. So negative 23a plus 22. So I know what you might be thinking, God, that's ugly, I don't like this at all, but these are our infinitely many solutions right here. If we plugged in a with zero, you know, we'd get, uh, say, 22 comma negative 13 comma zero. If we plugged in a as one, you know, one for a, we'd say, well, then we get negative 23 plus positive 22 is negative one. And uh, if we plugged in one for a for our y here, 15a minus 13, would be 15 times one is 15 minus 13 is uh, 2. Both of these solutions, if you plug them back in the or original system, you see they were. There are infinitely many solutions depending upon what this last a value equals or our z value. So the rule of thumb is this. If you ever get a consistent dependent system, just say z equals a and then back solve by plugging that back into your second and first equations respectively to find x and y. Enjoy.